Hey everyone, welcome to my channel, or if you're a subscriber, welcome back. Today, I wanna to talk about this lens. In my opinion, this is the best micro four thirds lens for the price. But what is it? This is the Lumix 12 to 60. Now, 12 to 60 doesn't seem like a massive focal range until you realize this is micro four thirds. So the numbers are double. This is a 24 to 120 millimeter lens. And in my opinion, this lens is everything you could ever possibly need in a lens squeezed down into quite a small form factor. Like it's about the size of a fist. <laughs> so I bought this lens used from MPB, not sponsored, but you know, if they're looking uh, for, I believe 200 euro. And if you look on there now, you can find these lenses ranging from 200 euro to about 230 euro depending on the condition and whether or not they come with the lens hood. And for the price, I think you're getting a lot here. This to me is the jack of all trades micro four thirds lens. So in this video, I'm gonna break down using this lens for stills, which is what I primarily use it for, primarily use it for. Uh, video, which is, well, I mean, pretty much every video on this channel has been filmed with this lens, or this one, because I'm using my 25 millimeter. And just my general thoughts on this lens. And yeah, let's get stuck in. Like I said, this is my primary stills lens. Occasionally, I will go for this 45 to 150, or occasionally I will use the 25 millimeter that's filming this video, but you gotta remember that's a nifty 50 essentially, just cause uh, micro four thirds and focal lengths. So this lens very rarely leaves my camera. Uh, the camera in which is the Lumix G9 that's filming this video, and I think all the stills you're gonna see kinda intercut with this section or shot with that as well. At 12 millimeters or 24 millimeters full frame, I think I'm just gonna say the micro four thirds uh, equivalent. I'm going to say the micro four thirds focal length going forward. So at 12 millimeters, this lens is wide enough to do architecture, uh, travel photography, and a bit of wide angle stuff. You do get a little bit of distortion, but to me, I kind of want that in a wide angle lens anyway. I want that kind of barreled effect. And then at the other end of the spectrum at 60 millimeters, it is long enough for you to get that kind of compression you'd want from a long lens and it's long enough for a bit of street photography, some bird photography, nothing too extreme. I've shot a few football matches with this lens. Uh, my brother plays for the local sports team, so whenever he plays, I go and take a few shots. Uh, in that scenario, I find I wish I had a longer lens. My longer lens isn't weather sealed, and the thing about living in Ireland is you kind of want weather sealing on all your gear because it rains here a lot. Carrying on with the versatility theme, the filter thread on this lens, I have a circular polarizer on at the minute, is 58 millimeters. So back when I had my Canon stuff, I had all these filters and they just work brilliantly on this lens. So I don't know if you can hear this lens rattling when I'm moving it around, but that's the in-lens stabilization which means it's great and you can do long exposure shots handheld, particularly when you combine it with in-camera stabilization. So the G9 has great in-camera stabilization. Well, I can do handheld for as long as the light will let me, basically. I took these with an ND filter and I believe it was about two to three seconds, the longest exposure. And then I took this just handheld in the underground for the U-Bahn in Berlin, uh, completely handheld as well. For low light photography, it's not great. You are limited. So when you're at the widest point of the lens, so when you're at 12 mil, your aperture is, I believe, 3.5. So that's not too bad. But when you zoom in to 60 mil, you are at f5.6, I think. Uh, so for low light, not great. But when you combine that with the stabilization in lens and if you have it in your camera, that kind of helps unless you're looking to just get a very quick snap, in which case you're going to have to bump up your ISO. And as much as I love micro four thirds uh, in low light, the sensors just aren't great anyways. Um, and at higher ISOs, just not that great. So what about video? Well, like I said before, this is the lens that I have shot most of my video on for this channel. So normally when I film videos on this lens, I will be shooting at 12 mil and I'd have the camera maybe like an arm's length away from me. Now for vlog style content, the lens is quite good. If you have it at 12 millimeter, you can comfortably using the G9 now as my baseline hold it at arm's length and you're in frame, the background's in frame, and with the stabilization, everything's grand. Uh, for more filming other things, uh, so 12 mil, pretty good. 25 mil, also pretty good. At 60 mil, you might want a bit more stabilization, like a gimbal, or you could perfect the kind of, I need a bathroom walk that uh, people have to do. <laughs> So the G9 is a pretty big camera by Micro Four Thirds standards. And while this lens is small, if you're only really using it at 12 millimeters, it's pretty big and heavy to be carrying at arm, like the end of your arm. 
even if you had something like a selfie stick or a tripod grip or a monopod, you'd probably be better getting the 12 to 32, I think it is, little pancake kind of zoom thing that Lumix do. Uh, that'd be brilliant for vlogging, but if you already have this lens for stills and you want to do a bit of vlogging style content with it, it's not a bother at all. So would I shoot a short film with this lens? I mean, if it was my own short film and I was financing it myself and whatever, yeah, sure, I would shoot it all with this lens. Uh, if I was shooting someone else's wedding or something, I probably really wouldn't unless it's as like a backup emergency kind of thing. As a still shooter, my mind kind of just like, I got this lens for stills but it does phenomenal video. The colors are great, the sharpness is great. I mean, even on the G9, I can shoot in V-Log and then pretty much do whatever I want with the colors anyway. But just with like the default standard profile, it's pretty great. So what about other features of this lens? Well, I mentioned the weather sealing and I don't know if there's a distinction between weather sealed and then just splash proof and dust or splash and dust resistance, which is what I think Lumix technically certifies this lens as. Uh, I've had this in the pouring rain for a few hours and it's been fine. The lens hood works as a lens hood to get rid of glare. It's not amazing. I leave it on so if I drop the lens it's got something but also the G9 with this lens on just looks like what a camera used to look like to me as a kid and I don't know just having this on makes me feel like I'm more fancy and more proper when I'm taking photos. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room which is the Panasonic Leica. 12 to 60. That lens has a aperture range of f2.8 to f4.0 so it'll be a lot better in low light and apparently it's like marginally sharper and build quality is meant to be better. I think the weather ceiling is like a slightly higher grade. Well here's the thing, I'm on the used market and always look on the used market, MPB is class. Uh, that lens is going to be like 400 euro to 430 euro so like essentially double the price of this lens and is it going to be double the performance? I don't think so. Now, if you have the money and you want a good walkabout lens and you have that extra 200 euro, sure, probably go and get the Panalaika. But don't sleep on the Lumix 12 to 60. Whenever I'm in camera groups, and camera groups are such an odd place to be because you'll just post a photo and be like, oh, look at this cool effect I managed to get by doing whatever. And people rip into you. It's, it's, it's odd, it's this really weird culture in gear oriented Facebook groups and like forums, whether it's audio gear, or camera gear, whatever. But um, they'll often like trash talk this 12 to 60 in favor of the Leica variant. And no offense to the Leica variant, I'm sure it's a brilliant lens. But for 200 quid, I think this is the ultimate micro four thirds lens. So, what do you think? If you shoot micro four thirds, could you see yourself picking up this lens? Have you picked up this lens? Let me know. Uh, if you liked seeing some of the pictures I was sharing throughout the video, my Instagram is linked down below. If you like this video, please give the video a like. And if you want to see more stuff like this, subscribe. Fair warning, I do camera gear, I do camera stuff, music stuff, video essay type stuff. The channel is very varied until I kind of find my niche. Stick around, you might find something you like. And if you don't, no harm done to me or you. So, cheers and thanks for watching.